I'm Cathy. Growing old is something that will happen to me and to you. It can be a good time of life for many, but for some, it's the age of loneliness. Dimpton and I are here to talk about a solution to loneliness. Philip Roth, in his Everyman novel, tells us that old age isn't a battle, it's a massacre. And I've seen in my work as a nurse, I've seen how aging can stifle living. If your health fails, if your memory fails, and if you are lonely. I want to tell you um, Brian's story. Last year, I interviewed Brian. Brian's 69. He um, he was the kind of person who always fixed and organised things. He lives on his own because his wife died two years ago and his three children live abroad. He was the kind of man who could build an IKEA flat pack. <laughs> he organised the holidays, he managed the finances, he was the doer. We all know someone a bit like Brian, don't we? Well, last year, Brian was diagnosed with dementia. He's now struggling with the simple things, like using a mobile phone. And he has stopped going out. Because, you see, he can't remember his friends' names anymore. And he can't remember the details of the holidays that they had together and he finds that embarrassing. So, um, you see, he hasn't told anybody he has dementia because he thinks they'll see him differently and he doesn't want that. Brian is really lonely. And what Brian needs now is some social support and companionship but our systems don't stretch to that. The costs are already enormous. Did you know that we spend 550 billion worldwide on dementia care? 1.9 billion in Ireland. Let's think about dementia for a minute. In the last 60 seconds, 20, another 20 people have just been told, you have dementia. <coughs> dementia affects older people, and the older you are, the higher the risk. So by the time we're all 85, one third of us will have dementia. That's everybody in that side of the theater. In my work in long stay care, I've seen how dementia wipes your memory of people, pastimes, places, loved ones. I've seen parents not recognize their sons and daughters. I've seen once articulate people struggle to find the simplest of words to communicate. Personalities fundamentally changed. But it doesn't have to be like that. You see, we can slow the decline of dementia down. If we do three things, we have to stay physically active, <coughs> mentally active, and socially active. That's why loneliness is a real problem. I have seen in my work as a nurse how loneliness squeezes the joy out of people's lives. And that's young and old not just people with dementia. Loneliness is a major public health challenge, one that we have to find new ways of fighting. Let's think about our weapons and let's talk 
about companion robots. So I want to tell you about our companion robot, Mario. Now, I have to admit, the first time I heard about companion robots, the first thing that came to my mind was Star Trek and Data, and Star Wars and R2-D2. So my expectations were really high. Well, <laughs> my technology colleagues weren't long putting me straight, and they said, come on, Dipna, you've been watching way too many Star Trek movies and science fiction movies. We're not there yet, although we are getting there. Now, I'd love to be able to physically introduce you to Mario here today, but actually he's off in France at the moment, enjoying the sunshine, after the wet and miserable winter we had in the West. But I do have a short little video clip that I could show you to give you an idea of what he looks like. Would you like to see it? Yes. Thank God you said yeah, because if you said no, I'm not quite sure what I'd show you. as they say in all the best Star Trek movies, one prime directive. And that is to provide friendly companionship. And the wonderful thing about Mario is that he will never get fed up with you when you actually ask the same questions again and again or tell him the same old stories again and again. He'll never do that. He'll actually continue to listen and respond as if he's hearing it all for the very first time. He'll actually play you your favourite television programme. He'll read you your favourite book. He'll actually be able to play you your favourite music. And you know a really cool thing he can do? He can find things that you've mislaid. Now for someone like me who's always searching and forgetting where I put stuff, that's really good. And whenever I leave the house, I'm frantically searching, trying to find my keys. And my husband says to me now, he can't wait till we get Mario in our house, because then maybe for once in my life, I'll actually get somewhere on time. Now, in terms of, of, of Brian's life, which I would have, I'll show you in a few minutes, <coughs> imagine Mario now with Brian. Mario is there. He's able to support Brian's failing memory, guide him, prompt him, make phone calls for him, as Cathy said, one of the difficulties he has, actually remind him when to take his medications. What a difference that would make to Brian's life. And for us as nurses and carers, knowing that there's somebody there with Brian day and night. And that's not all. Think about the benefits to society when the cost of technology becomes cheaper. They reckon with mass production that Mario actually will cost about five to 7,000 euro. Now that's an affordable solution in combating loneliness. You might very well ask, would it not be better if we had human companionship? Absolutely, no question. But our health services cannot stretch to actually provide that support. So our message to you today is that in the absence of human companionship, robots like Mario do have a place in our society in combating loneliness. We have the technology. We have the know-how. And best of all, we've got Mario. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 